taking filmmaking quite literally, out there doing it yourself, two guys. Well, yeah, we had a small crew with us, but we did things which I guess you could call impossible, but it's nice to do the impossible. We tried to set up, and we did. It's one of the first shots on Balinese Surfer. It's a Ketchak dance on Tanalot. Oh, okay. Now, that has a million and one issues. First of all, it's a tidal situation. Secondly, one has to shoot at dawn. Thirdly, one has to get a cast of thousands across the rocks, which are as slippery as can be, and get the whole thing set up. We got a helicopter in. We, yeah, we were fairly effective, and eventually we got... Well, it took us six weeks to put this one shot together. We had the Balinese staying at a local <laughs> village, loaded them into trucks, brought them down to, to Tanalot, which in those days had nothing there at all. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. And we got them all out, and we finally got the whole caboodle across onto the... Um, onto Tan a lot and then we had the helicopter shot to come in and actually it's the first shot on Balmany Surfer 1 and it, it's, it's, it, it, the, it's a pullback from the helicopter with the, with the Ketchak on the rock and it was, it was worth every moment because the Ketchak was a superb dance and it was very real, it wasn't yep. anything else than that and some of the disasters that went around it I won't go into. Yes. Well, where was the money coming up. from and where did it end oh, up being distributed? Oh, it was BBC World Around Us. With the BBC, sorry. But it actually went right around the world, and it became what they call a four-wall hit. What is it that? Was, it, 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 when, years later, when I was in Western Australia, it was showing at universities, and it was being bill-posted, because the idea behind it and the subsequent film, which we shot in 2002, it was a sociological film. Oh, okay. We wanted to show what was happening to Bali, how the changes that were coming to Bali were affecting the youth particularly. So the perspective was surfing because as you know, the Balinese traditions are terrified of water. Absolutely, yeah. So here were these young bloods standing on bits of plastic <laughs> and learning how to surf <laughs> with their parents going, holy smoly, what's going on here? And we took them through every single discipline, which most of them were capable of. They could carve wood, which we, were, we did. They could make gold. They could do everything. We did some wonderful shots with Balinese dancers and, and just some great dances in there, but also the binding of the girls in the clothing. And remember, there were no roads. So this was as authentic as one could get in those days. And I hope it shows in the film, but that's why it still holds water today, that first film. It, Absolutely. It's very yeah. As you said, there was a sequel. Yes, a sequel 24 years later. <gasps> Exciting. Now, where can we see these? I mean, we're, well, we're going to show a little I, bit. I, I, but I, I don't know, because it's... <laughs> No idea at this moment in time. I guess we could figure things out, but I've just got some copies left of what we did. But the sequel was paid for by the Australian Broadcasting Corporation and the FFC, and it was their largest Accord film of the year. It won the title. Now, an Accord film is the, what they term as, the, as their best documentary. And that came back and shot the same guys 25 years later. Oh, love and what had happened to them, what had happened to their island... What did they like? What did they dislike? It led us to form a very successful environmental organization here, which is working today. It's called GUS, Glombang Odara Sagar. Thank you. We started off with Wave of Change, and it still today is working very well with the surf industry, because most, most of these guys have become denizens of the surf industry, and they are now in their own right incredibly successful. But at the same time, their concern was the environment. What's happening to Bali? And we took the opportunity and seized it to create Goose and Wave of Change, which are both vibrant today. We have a waste treatment plant in Temesee, which is one of the most successful waste treatment plants. We have all sorts of things, wastewater garden toilets at Uluwatu. Everyone's still surfing. True. <laughs> And well, now, great. Richard, what we do, what we do here at Bali today is we have a website. And so, you know, our time is limited. I'm so sorry. Um, but what I want to do is get all that information. And so you can go onto the website and find out about Richard Flax and about Goose. And maybe we can even figure out a way to make some access to these films. Yeah. We'll try that out. So first of all, thank you very much for coming. My pleasure. We're going to take a look at these waves of change. Wave of change. It's called Balinese Surfer 2 wave of change. Here we go. A quarter of a century later, the scene has changed radically. Surf paparazzi can make the same journey in a matter of minutes, chasing photographs of some of the best surfing waves in the world. And these young surfing stars are the second generation of surfing on the island. 
and the sons of those who saw surfing completely change their island forever. Over the last 30 years, another group of legendary figures has captured their imagination dancing on water. The eighth boy in our story we called the Marketeer because he was the most influential in marketing the sport in the other islands. His name is Yoman Radiasa, or Bobby. Like all the others, he learnt to surf in the breakers in front of his house on Kuta Beach. Not the biggest waves on the island, but they had a nice shape and were great for them to learn on. He made his living making and marketing Balinese silver to the tourists. How to make the um, vessel. vessel of this ring, this poor ring. Well, it takes about, about 15 minutes. 25 years later, Bobby's a leading member of his temple and his community. He's also a leading spokesman for the boys from that first club who started an environmental action group to clean up Bali. We need this organization to support Bali and Indonesia because Bali has changed a lot and there's a lot of plastic now and people throw rubbish around. Maybe if we have this you know, wave of change uh, organization, uh, you know, and make people to think, wow, this is something in Bali that and a care for the island, care for the place, and care for Indonesia. 